there are two important and fairly urgent issues I would like to address. Uh, first of all, we are all uh, devastated uh, to see the horrific images uh, coming from Ukraine. Uh, Vladimir Putin's invasion has turned into an indiscriminate massacre of civilians, open shelling of civilian areas in built-up cities, uh, targeting uh, schools, apartment buildings, uh, and apparently last night even a nuclear power generation plant. These are uh, w crimes against humanity. These are uh, deplorable war crimes. Uh, and I want once again to reiterate how strongly uh, the government and people of Alberta stand in solidarity with Ukraine. Uh, since uh, the, the eve of Putin's invasion uh, of Ukraine, uh, we have uh, tried to provide as much support and expressions of solidarity as possible. In Alberta, announced a million dollars in support for humanitarian relief through the Canada-Ukraine Foundation uh, on the eve of the invasion. Uh, the legislature passed a unanimous motion expressing Alberta's solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Uh, Alberta Gaming and Liquor Commission has removed uh, all uh, Russian-made products available for resale and has ceased any orders of Russian products. The Alberta Investment Management Corporation uh, is rapidly divesting of its modest holdings in Russian funds and assets. Uh, I have instructed the Minister of Labour and Immigration to accelerate as quickly as possible any Ukrainian nationals who have applications for permanent residency through the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program, formerly the Alberta Immigration Nominee Program. And I today I'm announcing additional support uh, for Ukraine. Uh, the context, of course, is that uh, provincial governments do not have inter international development programs, but uh, we feel so strongly, uh, in part, I think, because the deep historical and human uh, connection between Alberta and Ukraine. We owe so much to Ukraine and the Ukrainian people, and we are so devastated to see acts of aggression, which are reminiscent of uh, the terror unleashed in Europe uh, between 1938 and 1945. In fact, uh, just uh, two days ago, Russian artillery shelled part of the uh, Babin Yar uh, memorial in Kiev, a, a site that I have visited on more than one occasion, a place where some 30,000 uh, uh, Ukrainian Jews were massacred by the Nazis over two days in 1941. And yet, even that sacred place has now been attacked by Vladimir Putin. And that is why uh, today I'm announcing that the government of Alberta will provide an additional uh, $5 million in monetary support uh, to the Canada-Ukraine Foundation to provide urgent humanitarian aid. We will also provide an, uh, $5 million of funding to the uh, World Ukrainian Congress's Unite with U Ukraine campaign uh, to provide desperately needed defensive military equipment for the Ukrainian territor territorial defense forces. Uh, these are um, largely civilians who are being trained and equipped to assist the Ukrainian army in defending their country and innocent civilians. This $5 million contribution will help to equip 5,000 members of the Ukrainian territorial defense force with critical defensive equipment, including flak jackets, helmets, uh, bulletproof vests, first aid kits, night vision goggles, uh, communications equipment, and essential fuel. Uh, these are both reputable organizations uh, at, with uh, stringent measures in place to ensure uh, the responsible uh, and prompt delivery of the equipment. Uh, finally, we'll be providing $350,000 in monetary support to the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress Alberta Provincial Council for their uh, Alberta Stands with Ukraine campaign uh, to help coordinate supportive efforts here in Alberta. And we are working with them actively to uh, support their uh, fill a plane for Ukraine campaign. In fact, um, I believe we've helped them to secure uh, uh, air cargo transport for the uh, first aid and defensive equipment that they are assembling here in Alberta urgently to ship that to Poland and then uh, into Ukraine. Uh, ultimately, these are 
in the scale of things, relatively modest measures, but uh, I think demonstrate in a very meaningful way the solidarity of the people of Alberta with Ukraine. I would like to add one other point uh, about the crisis, which is that uh, unfortunately we have seen uh, some acts of hatred and xenophobia being directed at Albertans of Russian origin. Indeed, uh, one of the Russian Orthodox churches here in Calgary was uh, defaced and vandalized last week. I'll be visiting that church later today uh, just to express uh, our solidarity with the uh, community of Albertans of Russian origin at this time. I am uh, confident that the vast majority of Canadians of Russian origin are appalled by the unlawful and brutal aggression of Vladimir Putin and in no way should Canadians of Russian origin be blamed or scapegoated for what is happening in Ukraine today. Uh, we need to remember the lessons of um, our, our own sad experience, for example, in the Second World War, uh, when Canadians of Japanese origin uh, were caught up in a wave of sentiment and anger. Let's not repeat those mistakes. Let's move forward together in support of the people of Ukraine during this difficult time. Secondly, before I get to today's announcement, I uh, want to speak to the growing uh, huge pressure on the cost of living that people are experiencing. Um, obviously, higher utility prices and now much higher uh, gas prices are eating into people's wallets and their uh, ability to pay the bills. We understand that. Every one of us has to get, get sticker shock when we go to fill up our gas tank or open our utility bill, and it's making life very difficult for people. Sadly, at a time when Alberta is really turning the corner in terms of economic growth, we have much about which to be optimistic about our future here in Alberta in terms of the economy, jobs and incomes. At the same time, people are really struggling just to pay the bills. We acknowledge that. When we developed Alberta's budget that was tabled last week, a plan to move forward, uh, well, uh, when we uh, were developing that budget in December and January, uh, oil prices were in the 70 to $75 range, and they've gone up now by about 40%, uh, most recently to a $110 price for WTI. Now, we don't know how sustainable that is, uh, but it may carry on for some months, uh, be in part because of uh, the uh, Putin's invasion of Ukraine and, and how that has destabilized global energy markets. Uh, we recognize that, and that is why I've directed the Minister of Finance uh, to work with Minister of Energy to come forward uh, quickly with a plan to provide consumer relief uh, for the, uh, in growing the growing gasoline prices. We want to make sure that uh, as the Alberta Treasury receives additional royalties from these higher prices, that some of that is passed on to consumers. Uh, we'll be developing plans over the weekend and will there will be an announcement, I hope, early next week about the specifics, but help is on the way uh, to help people cope with the rising cost of living, particularly for energy and fuel. And um, we will be moving forward on that as quickly as we can uh, to recognize a, a very dynamic situation in uh, commodity prices, in fuel prices, and in the cost of living. Uh, and uh, so with that, let me turn to the announcement, very happy announcement for today. As I say, it's great to be here at St. Josephine Bakita. Uh, thank you so much to the students and staff and teachers for hosting us here today to make this important and exciting announcement. Uh, as you may have heard, Minister Tays tabled the first balanced budget since 2014 with Budget 2022 just last week. Budget 2022 is moving Alberta forward with historic investments uh, to strengthen our health care system and expand its capacity so we never again face the types of pressure that we saw at peaks of COVID-19. And in the last week, we've been making many important announcements about that. Yesterday, 1,500 new continuing care beds. The day before that, uh, an announcement about 150 additional ICU beds, uh, major new capital projects in healthcare. It's about making Alberta the best place in the world to invest so that job creators come back to restore this uh, as a real place of economic opportunity. And critically, to do that, we know we need to strengthen our education system here in Alberta. We need to have the skills uh, so that uh, young Albertans can access the jobs of the future in this growing economy. And we're able to do this because after years of restraint and making some tough choices, we brought the province's finances back to balance. Alberta is moving forward. 
It's a time of economic recovery, and we are building the prosperity that will ensure opportunities for Albertans to build, to improve their skills, pursue their passions, and support themselves and their families. We know that investing in education also means building schools, and we also know that this new era of economic prosperity in Alberta is going to be a lot more people moving here, a lot more families with a lot of kids who need uh, access to uh, first-class education, and that's what we need to do in building additional schools as part of our uh, plan to build Alberta. So from elementary through to post-secondary to other opportunities for skills training and uh, employment programs, Albertans will be able to find jobs and provide for their families. And that is hugely important because as Alberta's recovery plan continues to drive our economy towards diversification, we're seeing whole new industries emerge in Alberta and fledgling sectors uh, turn into real powerhouses in our economy. Uh, so, uh, but as I say, uh, we also need to ensure that in our growing communities that uh, there are adequate spaces available in our schools uh, and that is why we stand in the school today as an example of our government's commitment to building schools and uh, the schools that our teachers and students deserve. I'm happy to announce today that we are building on that commitment. Through Budget 2022, Alberta's government is investing more than a quarter of a billion dollars in 15 new school projects, including the construction of five new schools, uh, four modernizations and six other projects, which Minister LaGrange will talk about in a moment. Two of the new schools will be right here in Calgary, a new middle, middle school here in the community of Evanston, and a new K-9 school in the community of Legacy. Budget 2022 also provides funding for a new high school in Northwest Edmonton, a new high school in Camrose, a new K-9 school in West Edmonton, modernizations for schools in Acme, Cochrane, Evansburg and Milk River, a replacement school in Manning, a water main repair for St. Francis uh, of Assisi School in Slave Lake, and design funding for schools in Sherwood Park, Raymond, Penhold, and Valley View. These schools will make sure that there's the classroom space we need for new students as our province continues to grow while preserving and modernizing existing schools. These schools are a key part of Alberta's recovery plan, which is already breathing new life into our economy uh, by creating new jobs and new opportunities. So I look forward to returning to Evanston in the near future to tour what I know will be a wonderful new middle, middle school for this great community. And I'll now invite Minister LaGrange uh, to add some details. Thank you, Premier, and good morning, everyone. I would also like to thank the students and staff here at St. Josephine uh, Bakita School and their principal, Paula Robinson, for hosting us today. This really is a lovely school with such a warm and vibrant spirit, and everyone should be so proud to be part of this school. I would also like to thank the Calgary Catholic School Division and the Calgary Board of Education for working with us to identify priority schools projects right here in Calgary. I am honoured to be here with my Cabinet colleagues and distinguished guests as our government announces the 15 exciting priority school projects included in Budget 2022. Alberta's government is firmly committed to supporting communities across this province with new and modernized schools for our students to learn and succeed. Through the budget, uh, through budget 2022 capital plan, we are investing $251 million in new funding over three years for 15 priority school projects. As the Premier mentioned, the City of Calgary will have two new beautiful state-of-the-art schools built in the communities of Evanston and Legacy. A new uh, public middle school for grades 5 to 9 will be built right here in Evanston, and a new K to 9 separate school will be built in Legacy. These new schools are identified as top priorities by Calgary's two school boards and will be hugely beneficial in addressing population growth and enrollment pressures in their communities. I'm also pleased to note that the Edmonton communities uh, will be benefiting from two new schools as well. Budget 2022 provides full funding for the new separate high school that received design funding in last year's budget. This new high school will be built in the northwest community of Castle Downs, Dunluce, an area that doesn't have a high school, which has led to enrollment pressures in other schools. And students living in that community have had to travel well beyond their neighborhoods to attend school. So I'm very happy that this will change in the near future. 
and a new K to K to nine separate school will be built in the West End community of Lewis Farms, an area of Edmonton also experiencing significant population growth and enrollment pressure. This budget also provides full funding for the new high school in Camrose, as well as a new K to 12 school in Manning and funding to modernize the K-12 schools in Evansburg and Milk River. The Bow Valley High School Modernization and Addition Project in Cochrane and the School Modernization Project in Acme are also projects fully supported in this budget. In addition, Budget 2022 provides design funding for an elementary school replacement in Penhold, a new high school in Raymond, a replacement school in Sherwood Park, and a replacement school in Valley View. And rounding out the list of school capital projects is a much needed water main repair at St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Academy in, Sl in Slave Lake. <coughs> Pardon me. These projects are part of our $2 billion, and I, I'll repeat that, $2 billion of investment over three years to keep building and modernizing schools while supporting the many other school projects currently underway across Alberta. I'm also very pleased to share that our government is investing more than $568 million for operations and maintenance funding to support the day-to-day -day upkeep of school facilities. We are also supporting existing schools experiencing capacity issues with $118 million over three years to support the continued implementation of the modular classroom program. These modular classrooms will bring relief in, ad in addressing the most urgent needs for additional classroom space in schools right across this province. I'm also very proud to note that in the midst of the pandemic last year, Alberta's government has stepped up and provided school divisions with $250 million to accelerate hundreds of much needed upgrades to schools and thousands of jobs. In addition, in budget 2022, we are providing $209 million in capital funding over three years to support the maintenance and renewal of existing school buildings through the Capital Maintenance and Renewal Program. By investing wisely in our schools, we are ensuring our students receive an education that enriches their lives and prepares them for successful futures beyond school. We will continue to build and update schools and communities right across this province and ensure our students have wonderful, modern schools like this one in which to learn, to grow, and to create lifelong memories. I will now turn it over to Minister Panda to uh, come to the pro podium for his remarks. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. What a beautiful school. Congratulations on your opening uh, this past uh, fall. St. Josephine Bakita School, exactly uh, the type of uh, learning facility we, we want to provide for as many Alberta students as uh, possible. We know that uh, great schools like this one enable students like you to excel. This, in turn, helps uh, set you on a path to finding your way into fulfilling jobs and uh, taking your place in thriving economy. New and modernized schools are a part of Alberta government's commitment to helping students succeed by providing the top quality facilities they need to be the best they can be. Schools like this, uh, like this one, are also a prime example of uh, how the government's investment into critical infrastructure supports Alberta's recovery plan to grow our economy and support jobs. Every taxpayer dollar being spent on infrastructure is designed to ensure that you, your family, your businesses, and your community benefit from uh, economic and social impacts. Every infrastructure and construction-related activity taking place in local communities like Evanston right here is supporting good-paying jobs for Alberta workers. In the short term, this includes jobs in design, engineering, and construction. It also includes jobs that ripple out from the construction work site to benefit Alberta manufacturers, suppliers, and trucking companies. 
and it supports jobs and economic activity in area coffee shops, grocery stores, and gas stations as these Alberta businesses see increased traffic from the work underway. Long after construction is complete, these projects ensure ongoing community-based jobs in programming, operations, and maintenance. So no matter where in the province our 2022 capital plan supports uh, investments in public infrastructure like uh, new and modernized schools, all Albertans benefit. These infrastructure projects are building communities, boosting economies, supporting jobs, and ultimately helping move Alberta and Albertans like you forward. So let's celebrate the school projects announced today. Uh, I, I'm, I'm obviously particularly excited to see the new public school right here in Evanston because uh, uh, Mr. Lagrange, uh, uh, they, this uh, uh, Central North area and uh, Northwest area, they have been talking about deficiency in uh, uh, school infrastructure because I campaigned a lot here. But uh, finally, we are able to see some progress right next door in uh, Coventry Hills, in uh, Northern Hills. Uh, we are completing that public high school, which, uh, which is the latest after many, many years for this part of the province and this part of Calgary, which I, I also happen to represent. So uh, I'm very pleased with this, and I want to thank all the community and uh, school board uh, trustees, both uh, Catholic and public, for their strong advocacy, uh, as well as my colleague, local MLA, Minister Essien. Um, he, he worked hard on all these uh, infrastructure requirements. Uh, he advocated strongly with me. So I would like to invite him to give his uh, remarks, but I want to thank all of you for taking time today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Panda. Good morning, and thank you, everyone, for joining us here today. I am Mohammed Yasin, Associate Minister of Immigration and Multiculturalism, but more importantly, the MLA for this, Cal for this riding, Calgary North, the best riding in Alberta. And it is such an honor, honor to serve this riding, and I am I'm so pleased that I have that opportunity to do so. Uh, thank you, Premier Jason Kenney, Education Mr. Adriana Lagrange, Infrastructure Mr. Prasad Panda, and Calgary Catholic School District Board Chair Kathy Williams. I would like to thank also Principal Paula Robinson and her staff and students for hosting us here today in their beautifully beautiful school, which is a brand new school as well. St. Josephine Bakita School is open this past fall here in Northwest Calgary, serving the community of Evanston. And I had the opportunity to come here to congratulate the principal right in the school here just before Christmas. It is one of many new modern schools that have opened in Calgary over the past few years. I am so proud to be part of a government that prioritizes and invests in school infrastructure for our children, for our communities, and for the future success of our province. With that, I would now ask Kathy Williams to provide a few remarks, please. Good morning, and welcome to all of those who have joined us here today. My name is Kathy Williams, and I am the chair of the Calgary Catholic School District. On behalf of our board and our district, it is my pleasure to welcome all our special guests that are gathered here today, especially our Premier, the Honorable Jason Kenney, the Minister of Education, the Honorable Adriana LaGrange, the Minister of Infrastructure, the Honorable Prasad Panda, and the Associate Minister of Immigration and Multiculturalism, the Honorable Mohammed Yassin. From the Calgary Catholic School District, I would like to recognize my fellow trustees, Mary Martin, trustee for wards 13 and 14, who is also the trustee in the ward of, Leg of Legacy that we've just been awarded, and also Myra D'Souza, trustee for wards 1, 2, and Cochrane, who is the trustee of this beautiful school. Our Chief Superintendent, Dr. Brian Zoomless, 
our Superintendent of Learning, North Schools, Kathleen Kosciak, our Superintendent of Support Services, Brad McDonald. He is the man now that takes over the ball because he builds our schools for us. Area Director, Steve Pentangola, and our school principal, Paula Robinson. I would also like to recognize uh, Vice Chair Susan Bukendinovic, <laughs> sorry Susan, <laughs> from the Calgary Board of Education, and also Marilyn Dennis, the President of the Alberta School Boards Association. Thank you all for joining us at our newest school in Calgary Catholic, St. Josephine Bakita. Born in 1868 in Defer, she was a saint who loved God and served with humility. She is a wonderful example for our students and staff. This school opened last September and now has close to 400 elementary students and the population continues to grow. I would also like to take this um, opportunity to thank the principal and her staff for hosting us today. It is always exciting to open a new Calgary Catholic school in vibrant and growing communities. That is why we are very happy and grateful that our number one priority of a new K-9 school in the Southwest Community of Legacy has been approved by the Government of Alberta for funding. With no current local school, Calgary Le Legacy students currently face ride times of up to 45 minutes to other locations. Given that the K-9 population of Legacy is set to double by 2026, this project required urgent attention. I would also, um, yesterday, Trustee Martin and myself met Min Minister Schultz down at the Legacy site. And we want to thank um, Minister Schultz for all the work that she did to help us obtain this school. Providing high school, high quality Catholic learning spaces to students in our rapidly growing community is important to their success. Thank you again to the Government of Alberta and we look forward to continuing to work together to ensure that all students have access to Catholic education in their communities. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, for those wonderful remarks. And congratulations to Winston. And also, thank you to the entire Calgary Catholic School District Board of Trustees for identifying the need for more schools for students here in Calgary. I will now turn over to Harrison, who will guide the media question and answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Yassine, and thank you to, uh, for welcoming us to the best riding in Alberta today. Uh, we're going to start with questions here on the floor first. Um, so there's a, a Unimic here for any journalists in person. I'd ask that you please use the mic to ask your questions and please identify yourself, your outlet, and who you're asking your question to. Thanks so much. Uh, it's Austin Lee, CTV Calgary. This one's for the Premier. Yeah, go ahead, Austin. So, Premier Kenny, I'm just wondering, uh, how does your government, this is about uh, coal mining, how does your government plan to strike a balance between economic interests and environmental protection as it pertains to coal mining on the eastern slopes? Well, actually, Minister Savage will be holding a news conference uh, to answer exactly that question at, I believe, noon today. So I suggest that you uh, put your questions to her on uh, the release of the coal report and a policy that will support its implementation. Okay, no thoughts on the, the coal policy at all? Uh, well, we believe in uh, responsible resource development, uh, and that will become clear in the announcement that she makes later today. Mm -hmm. There have also been uh, concerns about uh, orphan wells. We know that there's been a lot of money uh, allocated towards that from the federal Liberals. I'm just wondering uh, what part the province is playing in cleaning up some of those orphan wells, if at all, and uh, your thoughts on that. Well, we've administered uh, the orphan well program that has helped to uh, uh, complete and uh, uh, of thousands of wells across the province with a particular emphasis on those on First Nations reserves, working uh, with heavily with uh, First Nations contractors. In fact, just yesterday I was speaking to the uh, Executive Director of the Indian Resource Council who was very happy with the enormous progress that's been made uh, through that program which helped to create thousands of jobs across the province. And uh, we, of course, in addition to that, we've provided two loans as the provincial government to the Orphan Well Association to help accelerate uh, well reclamation and completion work uh, to provide for environmental remediation uh, of abandoned wells. 
many of which go back several decades uh, and which were wells that were developed uh, by companies that have long since disappeared. So these, th this is a longstanding environmental challenge and liability for the province. As I say, we provided two large loans to the Orphan Well Association. We secured those funds uh, from the Government of Canada uh, for the well reclamation program. Um, and we've also worked closely with the Alberta Energy Regulator to streamline their rules so that uh, there is stronger um, uh, certainty from uh, people developing new wells that they have the financial depth uh, to clean them up. And, uh, and now certainly with the strong energy prices, uh, there is no excuse for energy companies not to uh, respect their obligation uh, at well completion and remediation. And again, Minister um, Savage, who really actually is an expert on these issues, uh, she has uh, a master's degree in law on the precisely these regulatory issue, issues. She'll be available to answer more technical questions on that later today. Thanks so much, Premier. Uh, just one more call for any questions from the floor before we hop over to the phones. And seeing none, I'll have the operator please put through our first call. Carly Robinson, City News. Hi there, this is for Minister LaGrange. Um, with the schools in Edmonton, I'm just wondering if you can confirm which school boards are getting these, these two schools in these two neighbourhoods and what was the process in deciding these locations? So we have a very robust process that, um, that uh, all the projects go through. So uh, we have over you know 60 school divisions um, that provide their input. They, they uh, put their, their asks, their number ones, their number twos and so on forward. Uh, we typically have just shy of 400 requests a year for um, uh, new schools or major modernizations. And then it goes through this very robust gated process that the Auditor General um, had indicated that we needed to adhere to. And so a number of years ago, we put that process in place. And uh, in Edmonton, uh, there was a new school that was design funded last year that is now going to full funding. It is the new high school in Castle Downs, Dunluce for Edmonton uh, Catholic Separate School Division. And then uh, the new announcement today is a new elementary junior high school in Lewis Farms K-9 School for Edmonton Catholic School Division. Thanks, Minister. And Carly, do you have a follow-up today? Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering um, what, what message this sends to Edmonton Public because their, their membership is one of the fastest growing in the province for, for new students and they have been fairly, fairly vocal in their, their needs. Uh, was this decision at all political? Not at all. In fact, um, I was surprised to see that the Edmonton Public School Divisions did not rise to the top, did not meet the cut um, in terms of uh, what they were asking for. So I did ask a few questions and their top ask, um, and we typically choose the top um, ask that uh, the school divisions put forward because of course they are identifying their greatest need. And the top ask that they asked for was a school that only has about 69% utilization, an existing school, to replace an existing school with very low utilization and no health and safety issues. And so I, I, I'm very concerned about that. And so I, I am instructing my department to work with the Edmonton Public School Division to relook at their prioritization of projects um, to perhaps look at uh, placing schools in more um, where there is growth, uh, because I do understand uh, their concern and, and certainly would like to see more schools put forward for Edmonton Public School Division. Thanks, Minister. Operator, can you please put through our next call? Jesse Weiser, Global. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Uh, this is for Kathy Williams and potentially Mr. LaGrange. Uh, parents living in Aspen Woods in southwest Calgary have been advocating to build a Catholic high school in the area on existing land already set aside by CCSD in 2001. Is infrastructure funding for the school in the budget? Can they expect work to begin anytime soon? Or is there plans to eventually sell that land? Um, thank you. It, not at this time would we be selling the land. We have the most rapid growth within our school division in the southeast and southwest of Calgary. When it comes to high schools, we do have um, down in the south area, I believe it's number, well, it's in our second year, first priority, because we do recognize with All Saints being built, which is at capacity right now with Bishop O'Byrne, 
um, pretty much at capacity that we do urgently need another high school in the south of Calgary. Thank you. Uh, Jesse, do you have a follow-up today? Sure, yeah. Uh, this one is for Premier Kenny. Uh, are you aware of the health care discrimination allegations from Siksika Nation, and would the province consider a review as we've seen in other provinces? Thank you for the question. I haven't seen the specific statement they've issued today, uh, but I understand they are making a statement raising those concerns, and uh, it's partly because of those concerns that our government signed a protocol agreement with the Siksika First Nation on health care, in part to specifically address the issue of racism in accessing health services. Uh, former Health Minister Tyler Shandro worked very closely uh, with the Siksika uh, Health Council uh, on developing that agreement, and in fact, just last week, I met with the Black Chiefs of the Blackfoot Confederacy, including uh, Crowf including Siksika Chief or a Crowfoot, where we discussed this issue. So we recognize the reality uh, that many Indigenous people have long faced uh, elements of racism in accessing health services. And uh, as we've demonstrated in that protocol, and in um, w it is a priority for us to work with them to address those issues. Thank you, Premier. Operator, can you please connect our next call? Dylan Short, Post Media. Hello, my question is for the Premier. Going back to the uh, the plan to address rising gasoline prices, with the understanding that um, obviously the plans are still being talked about and discussed, I was hoping you could expand a little bit more on what's on the table. Are we looking at rebates, regulating gas prices, <clears throat> caps, uh, is, is everything on the table? Sure, we're looking at a whole range of options, uh, one of which could be a potential cut in the gas excise tax and uh, we'll be making a decision early next week on how best to proceed. The reality is that uh, we can't undo the global forces that are pushing up energy and other costs. Uh, it's something being borne by people across Canada and around the world, but because the Alberta Treasury does benefit uh, from additional uh, resource revenues when prices go up, we think uh, we have some capacity to provide people with, with at least some relief. Um, and it has to be meaningful relief, but uh, here's the problem. If we go forward with some kind of um, a consumer uh, price relief for these high gas and energy costs, and Ottawa proceeds with their plan to increase the carbon tax in a month, uh, then I, I fear consumers may, may be no better off. So we uh, plead with uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, given uh, the uh, crisis of inflation and energy costs, uh, park your carbon tax hike that's scheduled for April the 1st. Uh, because, you know, again, Alberta might step in and provide some meaningful relief, and then the federal government just scoops that back up in their carbon tax hike on April the 1st. And here's the problem with those carbon taxes. They're all designed on the idea of making energy less affordable, which makes very little sense in a cold northern, uh, far-spread country like ours. Um, there are better ways to reduce emissions than punishing people for filling up their gas tank and heating their home. Uh, and, and that's especially clear right now. Here's my problem. For the carbon tax fans, uh, these ridiculous gas and energy prices are considered a good thing. They're considered a feature, not a bug. And so, uh, yeah, we'll, got, Alberta will uh, act, uh, I believe, early next week uh, to outline uh, uh, very immediate relief for consumers. Uh, but uh, we need the federal government to, to be part of the solution and not make the problem even worse with their carbon tax hike on April Fool's Day. Thanks very much, Premier. Uh, or rather, uh, Dylan, do you have a follow-up today? Yeah, again, for the Premier, along the same topic. In the past, you've been hesitant to, to step in on, on regulating gas prices in, in any way. I, I believe it was during one of your Facebook Lives that you were asked, a similar question about rising gas prices, and you said that it is essentially, you know, it's going to cap cost taxpayers one way or another. If you're reducing taxes, then it hurts in the budget. I guess what, why change the stance now? Is it just those higher gas prices, or, or what? Yeah, why well, change the? Their... Well, specifically, uh, look, we, we all know that gas prices go up and down. We're all used to that, and sometimes we get ticked off when they go up, and then. Uh, less agitated when they go down. And that's, that's just a normal market reality. But what we're experiencing right now is not normal. Um, when we were planning this budget, we were looking at uh, 
uh, we, we thought that oil throughout the year might be in the high 60s. Ultimately, we, we landed at $70 uh, when we uh, closed, when, when we locked down the budget a few weeks ago. And now oil prices are $110. And there's a very real prospect that there could be another huge step up with the global instability that we are seeing. And so uh, that will generate additional resource royalties for the Alberta Treasury at very high rates. And uh, we think that uh, th some of the, that should be passed on to Alberta consumers. Uh, but again, that uh, consumer protection from the government of Alberta will only be meaningful if Ottawa doesn't proceed with higher gas taxes, higher fuel co costs on April the 1st. So it's time uh, for uh, Mr. Trudeau to take a step back and not to punish consumers when they're barely able to pay the bills already. Thank you, Premier. Operator, can you please put, th put through our next call? Ashley Joanno, Post Media. Hi, good morning. Um, this question is for the Premier. Um, Alberta is essentially providing $5 million for weapons in Ukraine. I'm not sure if I've ever heard of a province funding international military equipment. Can you talk a bit about why you chose that route as the best way to provide support? So th that's not accurate. Just to be clear, uh, the $5 million that we will be providing in support to the World Ukrainian Congress's Stand With Ukraine campaign will be for non-lethal uh, defensive equipment. Uh, so uh, helmets and flak jackets, first aid kits, uh, and uh, the fuel are not weapons. Uh, they are not lethal. They are defensive equipment. Here's the reality. Uh, the or ordinary people of Ukraine are uh, joining the Ukrainian Territorial Defense Forces uh, to defend their homes, their communities, and their families from a kind of military aggression that we have not seen in Europe since Adolf Hitler. And uh, there are uh, tens of thousands of Albertans born and raised in Ukraine who have helped us to build this province, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian descent, and this province has a deep and special connection. We have, after Ukraine and Russia, the largest Ukrainian population in the world, of any, certainly of any subnational jurisdiction. And so we have a stake in, st in stability and peace there. And I don't think we can responsibly just sit on the sidelines watching civilians be massacred while they're seeking to fight for their families and their homes. So we'll be providing equipment that will help to save lives, not to take lives. This is non-lethal equipment. This is defensive equipment that will help better to equip, uh, to, to equip uh, groups that are seeking to defend civilian lives um, and better protect them from Russian aggression uh, in a non-lethal way. Thank you, Premier. Ashley, do you have a follow-up today? Yeah, I'm just wondering if you can confirm whether or not Alberta has ever done something like this in, in other conflicts. Not that I'm aware of. Um, we have, in the past, had modest international assistance programs, uh, and uh, but I think this is an unprecedented situation that we are facing, and uh, I feel we have an obligation to do our part. Uh, the Government of Canada, of course, is uh, playing a role, and they are providing actual lethal munitions and weapons. Um, as the Minister of National Defence, I actually deployed the Canadian Armed Forces to Ukraine for the first time, uh, in 2015 for Operation Unifier, which for the past seven years has provided important uh, training to modernize and make the Ukrainian military more effective uh, as they are demonstrating through their valor and courage on the field today. I'm proud of the role that uh, Canada has played in helping to improve the effectiveness of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. And I'm glad that the federal government is providing lethal munitions to, as are uh, most Western democracies, uh, to support Ukraine's defense at this time. Um, and I'm also proud that Alberta is able to step up and provide some life-saving defensive equipment uh, to support civilians defending their homes and their families. Thank you, Premier. Slava Ukraini. Uh, operator, can you please put through our last call? Scott Dipple, CBC. Yes, good morning. Uh, just further to the Premier, um, are you placing any conditions or restrictions on the World Ukrainian Congress in terms of how that uh, the money is used? You mentioned non-lethal, but I just wonder if what guidelines are, are being, or conditions yeah. are being placed on that money. Yeah, we'll develop, uh, we're developing a, a contribution agreement uh, with the World Ukrainian Congress for their Unite with Ukraine uh, campaign. Uh, and uh, as I say, the funds raised will be used for supplying a range of needs to people on the front line, including 
uh, first aid kits, bulletproof vests, uh, and helmets, night vision goggles, communication equipment, and fuel. So uh, we will uh, specify the conditions of the contribution agreement and will be uh, non-lethal equipment of that nature. Thanks, Premier. Scott, do you have a follow-up to finish things up today? Uh, yes, just a quick follow-up. I'm not sure if it, uh, if it would be for the Premier or perhaps for Minister Panda. In terms of the new schools, um, how, what's the, the financing model here? Is it going to be... Uh, direct finance by the government, or will it be P3, and just what will we see construction starting on some of these projects by the end of this calendar year? That's a good question. I keep trying to get Prasad to do more P3s, so I'd like to hear the answer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that question. We are, uh, we are uh, still evaluating the procurement methods, so uh, we are looking at opportunities if we can bundle uh, some of the schools together. Uh, to, and uh, to evaluate, unless there is value for money when we do this uh, uh, selection criteria, it has to prove the value for money for taxpayers. So, so we're we have had to complete that. As soon as uh, we finish that, I'll share that information. Thanks, Minister Panda. That wraps things up today. Thanks, everyone.